Okay. Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, dear attendants. Uh, it is my great pleasure to welcome you to the 15th International Conference of Business Process Management here in, in Barcelona. So it is the first time that this conference comes here to Spain. So we, we are very happy about it. And uh, first thing I want to do is just to say a few words uh, acknowledging the work many people involved in the organization of this conference has uh, carried out in the last year and a half, so to say. So uh, first, the, of course, the sci scientific part. You have there listed all the members that were responsible to shaping this, the, this outstanding uh, technical program we have. So I want to give a warm thank to all the people just involved in this. Thank you very much. Second, of course, we are devoted to the support we have received from minute one from the sponsors. I think I'm, I wish, uh, I, I really like, uh, and I'm very uh, happy about the support, the financial support that helped us a lot to, to organize the event. So thanks uh, again to the sponsors. And uh, last but not least, uh, I would really like to thank the local organization. There are many names there. These are the people that uh, have this green background on the badge, or they have even the black T-shirt. And uh, they have been helping us in the last year to, to, to really organize these things. So anything you might need, you contact them. But first, we need to really, and I would like to thank them especially, the work and their, their dedication. Thanks a lot. So now talking about uh, logistics, uh, numbers, uh, statistics, and uh, so we have gross about 370 uh, attendants, attendants here. So many people, I think it, it has been a great success. And uh, only on registrations, we are about uh, 300 peop people registered to this conference. Uh, as you know, we have on Friday, we have this local event with being Spanish, trying to promote BPM. Uh, activities here in Spain, and for those we are, we have already 52 people registered. So if you sum up, you get, you get really a lot of people attending this conference here in Barcelona. I think it it has been. I'm very happy and very satisfied by this uh, great success. Okay. Also, we have about 34 different countries involved in the in the in, in the as attendant to this to this conference that also tells a lot about you know the transversality of the of the area and how do we reach many 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 different countries so this is kind of a, a good sign of, of of health so if we look at the registrations per country we still see that there is some tendency that is preserved all over the years so you can see that germany is about a quarter of the registrations but now we have the Netherlands and Spain is in the third place. And uh, we have uh, Belgium and Italy, Austria, and so on and so forth. So this is more or less following, I guess, the, the tendency of the last years. About the type of registration, so the roles of the people who register, we also have a, a four quarters very clear, cleanly defined. So we have these three quarters corresponds to people from the university, but on different roles. So for instance here, this is professors, which is a quarter of all these 300 registrations. Then we have researchers associated to the university. There might be a, you know, an intersection here. And then we have 22% of people that has registered who are students. That also is a good sign that we have young people who believe it's interesting to come and learn here in this conference. And last but not least, we have like another quarter that is split between industry and administration. So I think it's really remarkable that uh, this is the amount of registered people from, from that area. I think it's important that we still have people from, from, from industry and administration, and I'm really happy about it. So this, this, this just is the 
number of attendants per day. This is a bit outdated because that was one week ago, but you can see that on, we already had on Sunday, we have the doctoral consortium and, a, and the BPI workshop, and we have about 70 or 80 people there. Then yesterday we have the workshops, and uh, we have more than 200 people around already. And today, tomorrow, and on Thursday, we will have uh, the main conference, and we are expecting to have about 250 or more people around, okay? And then this event is also, we'll have a bit like 60 people uh, involved in this local event that we will have in, 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 in on Friday. So a bit of logistics. So here is where we are. We are in this Vertex building here. This is the Campus North. And I will tell you a bit where the places, for those who are new this day, today, where the places take place, so where the sessions take place, sorry. And uh, I will try to do this. So this is the flattened map. We are here in the Vertex. Important, in the garden we have the, the coffee breaks. Today it's very likely that we will move the coffee break in the hall because of the rain, okay? So uh, also here, this is the auditory where we are. This is where we are. And here it will take place the plenary sessions of the main track of the conference. Then uh, in the minus one floor uh, in this edge of the building, you have the salad actas where mainly would be uh, handling tutorials and the industry tag today. And uh, uh, the Vertex room S217 will also hold the, some tutorial, okay? And here is the garden where we have the, the this coffee breaks, if possible, if, if the, the weather allows it. So uh, the La Unity restaurant is uh, here in this square. So we are here. We have to walk a bit like this. There are many ways of doing this. You can even do like this or what, like this. There are signs all over the campus indicating where the, the, the lunches take place. And in the same square, tomorrow, opposite to it, we will have the demo sessions, OK? And that is the Agora room, uh, which looks like this. There will be a, a bit of restructuring this, because we have a, about 34 demos on there. So tomorrow, also, we have the, the dinner. And uh, the dinner, will, uh, we will have buses uh, from the conference venue. In fact, if you come from the metro, you pass through this path. And you will have to wait here tomorrow at 7.45 to pick the, the, the metro, the, the bus, taking you to the conference venue that will be at uh, about 20 uh, past, half past, half past 20, half past 8, sorry. What else? So uh, being connected is important. So we have two uh, Wi-Fi possibilities. For those who are academic, the EduRoom maybe is the bet best choice for you. But if not, you have this uh, XSF UPC, this Tyler Wi-Fi for you, so you can, you can use it. And uh, of course, we are being strong, uh, uh, using the WOBA applications. This is app mobile application that we are using. And you can find it in Apple Store or Google Play. And it is important. There you have the program. And any update of the program will be automatically listed there. So yeah, you, you, you can react, have a fast reaction. This is how the application looks like. So you have it here. You can do the networking, and there is already, uh, for instance, a photo contest going on. So you can make photos, and tomorrow in the dinner, the winner of the photo contest will be announced, and also the, a caption contest, because sometimes we make photos, but we don't know who is the guy there. So there will be uh, two contests, uh, and so I, I encourage you to, to participate. What else? We have also a newsletter that will be today, tomorrow, and on, on, on Thursday. And you would be able to find the newsletter after the coffee break. It, and, and, and it's announcing some cultural things, but also some, for instance, here, this is the photo of the uh, people that participated in the doctoral consortium. So social events. Yesterday, we have a reception. We had a reception at uh, PRBB. And this is a photo. And it, unfortunately, we don't see the sea, but the sea is around here. Uh, there is also today and on Thursday, for those who book that in advance, there is the Sagrada Familia visit. And uh, you have been contacted with our secretariat to be to, for, for giving you indications how to get there. And on Wednesday, so tomorrow, we'll have two social events. So after the demo session, 
there will be a, a small uh, demo of a very particular Catalan, uh, a very particular part of the Catalan culture, which is Castellers. You can see here a photo. There will be a group, which is a university group, that will show us and will explain a bit after the demo session uh, some castellers. They will make some small castells for you, and uh, this will be in the same square where the demo session is taking place. Okay. And uh, finally, tomorrow night we will have the dinner, and this will be in a very nice uh, place where you have a very nice sightseeing of the city. Uh, and if the weather allows it, we will also have a, a reception uh, outside with to, uh, a cup of cava and uh, just enjoying the weather. Okay. This remember, don't miss the buses. It's at 7:45 tomorrow in the in this place here. Let me show you again this place here for the buses. Okay, so this is it. And I hand over to this, to Gregor. Okay, good morning. So my name is Gregor Engels. Uh, I'm one of the three program chairs, and I also welcome Akil, Kuma, and Josep, you all have seen here. So when uh, they convinced me to become a program chair, the steering committee told me, uh, come to Barcelona. There's always sun. Thank you. <laughs> and there's not too much work to work on the, P on the PC. Both uh, is not true. <laughs> it was a lot of work. But we enjoyed the work, and uh, I think we, we made a very good program for you. So um, we got uh, 160. Uh, uh, papers this year, a little bit less than last year, and you can see here the distribution again. Um, many people uh, from Germany submitted, but all the other Europeans uh, you can see here. Uh, we compared this a little bit with last year, uh, what happened in uh, uh, Brazil, and here you can see that um, there were many papers from Brazil last year. This year there was less, more papers from Spain than maybe you would be expected, but uh, Josep already explained that there will be a special conference here on BPM, so it's good to publish it uh, and to make more you know, publicity for BPM. Um, maybe the next year you will have many papers from Spain. I, I'm, I'm quite sure about this. Um, yeah, what you can see here is also is that, uh, uh, Will, I don't know, know what happened here. Uh, last year we had many papers from the Netherlands, uh, this year less. Maybe BPM is moving away from <laughs> To Germany, thank you. <laughs> Very good. Okay, we also looked at the primary topic areas, and uh, here you can see that many papers were on execution monitoring intelligence and um, also on post identification modeling uh, foundations and um, an analysis improvement. A little bit less papers on broader context, emerging areas, management aspects. Also, here we compared it with last year. And you can see that um, there is a little bit of a shift, uh, especially more papers on process analysis this year, a bit less in identification execution, more or less the same here in uh, these uh, emerging areas and management aspects of BPM, but only a few. So in total, uh, we, we tried to have uh, for each paper a separate PC member. So we have 103 PC members, 116 papers. Uh, so we have many the big PC, uh, also we had uh, senior PC members. We had a lot of discussion and we had uh, many reviews. Uh, we asked for four reviews for each paper, at least in the average for most of the papers. And this was the process on, uh, on, on a lot of discussion to select a good, good program. We would like to thank all the reviewers um, who helped us uh, to make um, uh, the program. At the end, we uh, accepted 19 papers. This is an acceptance rate that's quite low. Uh, for 16 uh, percent, and then um, we also accepted some papers for the forum. So in total, we have an average uh, acceptance rate of nearly 26 uh, percent. So um, looking now at the accepted papers, you saw uh, which papers have been submitted to the different areas, and this is also interesting. Maybe also interesting for the steering committee discussion that uh, the this is, uh, has been accepted here. BPM in the broader context, management aspects of BPM. So if you work on that area, 
maybe you don't, should not submit it to BPM because it not, get not accepted. Uh, if you compare it to last year, the same uh, management aspects uh, was not expected to, uh, uh, accepted last year, and neither this year. Last year we had some papers in the border context, this year zero papers in the border context. So I think uh, we as a com community have to work on this, that the BPM becomes broader and uh, we get more papers also from the, say from the borders of, of our um, uh, topic. Um, so what you can see here is uh, many papers now in uh, process analysis uh, compared to last year. The others are more or less the same. So this shows a little bit uh, how this area is moving and uh, where are the hot topics. Um, but on the other hand, I think uh, task for the steering committee uh, to, stay, to keep uh, this, this topic broad and to take care that uh, we also get papers in the future in the border context and management aspects of BPM. So we produced uh, two um, proceedings, um, by both by, by Springer, so also thanks to Springer for their support, and all of you have this, in, um, this uh, available. And um, last point, um, in preparing a good program, of course, always important to have good keynote speakers. Uh, I think we found very, very good ones. Uh, we start today with uh, Miguel Valdez. You will see him in a few minutes. Tomorrow we have uh, Matthias Weske, you know him, he is an insider, and we also try to get an outsider from the community with Alan Brown. He will speak uh, on Thursday. I'm quite sure that all of you will give a very, very interesting uh, uh, talk and uh, will yeah, uh, contribute to the success of this conference. So the conference, uh, these three days, um, you can see we have uh, different tracks. We have the research track, industrial track, we have demos, we have tutorials, and don't forget the panel on Thursday. You are all invited to come to all these tracks, at least to one of them. Okay, thank you, and I wish you and me a good conference. Yeah, so also on behalf of uh, me as chair of the steering committee, a very warm welcome. Uh, I think uh, there should be 370 people here. I think we are still missing a few, but that's probably due to the very nice reception that we had uh, yesterday. Uh, so the steering committee uh, is composed of these people. Uh, during the last year, during the meeting that we had last year, uh, we decided to invite Jan Mendling as a new member and he accepted and he started on the 1st of uh, January. So here's a list of people. If you have any ideas related to the conference and the way that it should develop, like the goal of the steering committee is to ensure that, uh, let's say, there is a good focus, that the conference stays broad enough, uh, and we try to guard a bit, let's say, the future of the conference uh, itself. So uh, we already saw some people on the stage. Akil will come in a minute. Uh, so a conference like this is only possible because the work of many, many people, many local people. Here you see the people that have a role in organizing one of the elements of the, of the conference. Of course, the PC chairs are very important, but every conference has a single point of failure. And that's uh, the person who has to do most of the work, is the driving force behind the success of a conference. And I think in each year we see clearly a person. Last year it was Flavia. And this year it is clearly Joseph. I'm sure that he uh, has to catch up with sleep in the coming weeks after this conference. But I propose that we give him a big thanks for all his work that he did. <laughs> so we have people in these organizational roles. Today we will see the first keynote and other keynotes uh, will follow. And of course you as an audience it's very important that you are here, that you're submitting papers, that you are uh, reviewing things. There is also this newsletter. So again, if you have any of these, any news, let us know, and we will uh, 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 try to put it in the newsletter and organize things. This year is also a bit of a, a historic event. Uh, so I'm hand over the BPM baton to uh, Matthias Weske. Uh, uh, so I announced in the conference in Tallinn in 2012 in the steering committee that I would stop. I think 15 years have been enough. It's uh, good for uh, some fresh blood. Uh, and I'm very glad that Matthias is willing to take this uh, job. Uh, so the younger people will not know, but Matthias was uh, one of the founding members of the steering committee when the conference started in 2003 in Eindhoven. He was also the person that organized the second 
BPM conference. Yeah, so some of the miners will see a pattern here and the question is whether it will be extended. So I'm very glad that uh, Matthias is taking on this job. He will be supported by uh, Marlon Dumas as, uh, as vice chair. And uh, one of the things that they will do is they will try to think, okay, how can we further improve this conference? And I think in the statistics that were shown by Gregor before, there is always the concern that not all areas of BPM get enough attention. Uh, that it becomes like a, like a very focused conference, which is very narrow. So one of the things that will happen is that uh, there will be a, like a track structure. And during his keynote tomorrow, Matthias will uh, elaborate on, on, on the plans, let's say, for the future years. So as mentioned, this is, there have been 15 years of conferences. Here you see all of them. Uh, so the first one was in, in Eindhoven. The second one was in Potsdam. The third one was in Nancy. I think then we had a sudden growth of this conference, also partly during the, the workshops that we organized. And here you can see that we have traveled uh, all around the world. I would be happy to reflect on these uh, 15 years of conferences, but I'm not going to do that now, because it's uh, also, yeah, we need to look forward and we need to see the things that are ahead. So we are a very healthy conference. You can see that based on the number of people that are here. But we can also see that uh, because we already have very concrete plans for the next three years. Yeah, so some, some conferences, when they have the conference, they will not be know where they will be next year. We know where we will be the next three years. Yeah, so next year the conference will be in, uh, in Sydney. Bualem is the main uh, organizer. Matthias is like the general uh, chair. And there will be the three check track chairs that are listed there. But again, Matthias will talk much more about that uh, uh, tomorrow. After Sydney, we will go to Vienna. And of course, Vienna, from a BPM perspective, is a remarkable city. I think there are few cities in the world with such a concentration of BPM researchers. So I think it's very nice that we will go there in two years. And uh, we love Spain. That is why we are here but that's also why we will be back in Spain in 2020. And so then the conference will be in uh, Sevilla, uh, also a beautiful uh, Spanish uh, city. But this is all in the future. I think we should look at uh, what is now. Uh, so the future is bright, but the present uh, is the part that we still need to enjoy. So I all wish you a very enjoyable conference. Thank you. Greetings and good morning. Uh, my name is Akhil Kumar from Penn State, for those of you who don't know me. Uh, I would like to extend my uh, personal welcome to all of you to BPM 2017 and Barcelona. We'll start off the conference with a keynote by uh, Miguel Valdez, the CEO and co-founder of uh, Bonita Soft. I just want to say a few words about him by way of introduction. Uh, Miguel leads the Bonita Soft's mission to democratize BPM, uh, bringing powerful and affordable BPM to organizations of all sizes. They build a BPM-based application platform to rapidly create uh, customized business applications. Uh, Bonita Soft has thousands of customers and a very large uh, open source community. Uh, before Bonita Soft, Miguel led R&D, pre-sales and support for the BPM division of Bull Information Systems. Uh, he's a thought leader in BPM uh, and passionate about the open source community uh, building. His talk today will, be, will focus on the intersection of BPM and AI, which is a very interesting topic, and a lot of us are interested in it. Um, after the talk, we'll have some time for uh, uh, questions and answers. So without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Miguel. Please join me in welcoming him.
Can you hear me? Perfect. Hello, everyone. Bon dia, Barcelona. Uh, actually, a real pleasure for me to be here. You know, not only to have the opportunity to open, you know, with this keynote the, the conference, but also to make it here in Barcelona, my hometown. You know, I'm, I was born here in the city, and I left the city 16 years ago, uh, you know, to, for my first, uh, to start my, start my professional career uh, out of Spain, out of my country, out of Catalonia, uh, so in, uh, in France. Uh, probably you, you know the place I started. That was not, not also my first experience, uh, you know, uh, uh, as a professional uh, engineer, but also my first exposure to BPM. I started uh, as an engineer at the BPM labs in France called INRIA. You probably know the INRIA labs. Uh, and I was uh, also, you know, really lucky at that time to work with a, a team of researchers, uh, you know, we, uh, that, you know, which I learned a, to a ton of things about BPM. And also I co-founded an open source technology that is called Bonita, uh, that today is still the underlying technology that we're using in the company that I'm running Bonita stuff. So because of all of that, uh, you know, really a special moment for me to be here back to Spain. Um, my, during the session, I'm going to talk about different things. Of course, I'm going to share my thoughts about uh, uh, how I see artificial intelligence uh, you know, intersecting with BPM. But you will see, especially at the beginning, that I'm going to also cover other topics. Uh, so what are the other technologies and what are the opportunities I see uh, uh, for, for the BPM uh, you know, in the coming years? And you will see how artificial intelligence is going to bring that into the mix. Check if this works. Yes. It's not this one. Can you just presentation? Here we go. Okay. Need to move that. Because I think it's I can start. In a conference like that, my presentation with a statement like this one, if that works. For some reason, it's not working. That way? It's in presentation mode already, right? Hmm. OK. I'm not taking a lot of risk in a BPM conference to start with BPM is not dead. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway. And the reason why I'm doing that is because, you know, every other year, there is one or two articles about uh, uh, BPM is dead. And for different reasons. There is one side uh, of the people is saying, like, you know, BPM is not delivering on its promises. BPM should be a bigger market. And then you have other people that say BPM is a little bit too reduced as a name for you know, covering the whole market. So there's people like, we need to change the name of the, of the market, and then you have the analyst and a lot of people involved. No? Uh, you know, my experience every year is that I see more customers, more people in the academics working on the BPM or new use cases. So I really think that BPM is alive and kicking. And this is what I'm going to try to demonstrate today. Um, between me and you, now that nobody's hearing, I think we can also admit that even if there is a bright future ahead, BPM has been a little bit unsexy lately. And I think that part of that is because of the use cases and the examples that we take usually to illustrate what BPM is about. And also on the other side, because usually, at least from an industrial point of view, the majority of the projects are related to the operations. So I think we're missing some nice stories that are impacting the end users. Just like, I don't know if you have been in this, can be even an awkward situation in which you are in a, in a dinner with friends and family. And usually, that question arrives probably after two uh, glasses of wine. Uh, and somebody is asking you, like, uh, but what are you really doing as a job? Because they know that you are in the BPM, but they don't get a clue. Uh, and it's like, what is exactly your job about? And it's difficult, and that explains why. It's